and welcome to the Vengeance Rising No Budget Video 1998. Remember, this is not a low budget video, this is a no budget video, but uh, since you're into the band that much, we wanted to be able to take you through touring stages for several albums, some clips from the, all around the country, things you're going to dig it, and uh, just keep in mind that from here on in 1998, 99, 2000, you'll be able to keep in touch with me through the World Wide Web and or through phone calls for any questions you're going to have concerning the polemic that's involved. As obviously you guys were into the band for various reasons, there's some things I need to, you know, implement and share with you regarding the nature of what I was really doing and what we're doing now, so way you can be involved in it. So here's a video. Hope you dig it as uh, trashed out as some of it is, but um, get some cool concert footage, and we'll talk to you in a little bit. Way, this is a holy day for some of our guests. I think semantically we should say it's an unholy day for some of your guests. <laughs> an well, unholy day. Nicholas, uh, what is the werewolf order? You represent the werewolf order. Yes, what is I it? I founded the werewolf order in 1984 as a vanguard for the coming satanic century because we have been defined by Christians and our enemies for too long. Now Satanists are coming out of the underground to reveal what Satanism is in the media. We're putting out our own music, satanic music, truly satanic music, not this heavy metal crap that we've had saddled onto us. We don't like that sort of music at all. Satanic music would be in the tradition of composers like Richard Wagner, Rachmaninoff, the great classical composers. <laughs> Yo, we're going to be turning you on to a bunch of footage from all across the country with interviews with the guys and everything. I'm talking to you today from the hills of Hollywood, California, where I learned to skate. And I'll tell you what, over to my left is the emergency broadcast system. What are they going to be warning people here in the event of a nuclear attack on our country where people are going to start thinking about the message we've been telling them for a long time? Because instead of walking on the street with this nice, happy smile on their face and everything's going fine, they're going to start looking something like this. Keep in mind, boys and girls, this is the real world. Some two and a half tons of TNT for every man, woman, and child on the planet. megaton hydrogen bomb exploding in the air above a single city would be an unimaginable catastrophe. The intense thermonuclear flash would ignite everything it touched over a distance of eight miles. The shock wave would explode most buildings. Raging superheated winds of hurricane force would whip fire and debris through the air. knows how many such bombs would be detonated in a nuclear war, or if a war could be kept limited once it began. Our two countries rely on the terror of nuclear war to help us keep the peace. We've come to this precarious condition over the last 50 years of the nuclear age. This was the beginning.
Okay, now that tune, White Throne, basically, it's a song that also implements that psychological warfare. It inflicts on mankind the threat of torture. Now, you wouldn't like that, and nobody else likes it either. And see, it's based not on some revelation from somebody in outer space. It's a man-made document that is used to sell. Publishers sell it for Jesus. No, 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 Jesus, no, nobody named Jesus ever came and told them, yeah, go sell my words. I mean, is that the most ridiculous thing you've heard in your life, that somebody's selling some God's words? It's, it's just ridiculous. And so, basically, what that does with the lyrics when they say there's going to be nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, all it is is a threat to people. It's an imposition. It's vampirism. It's taking from their daily normal life and putting them into a place where they have to go, oh, well, damn, these people think this of me. What type of a social relationship can you have with people who know full well that you believe that they're going to be the screaming in horror and terror and while you and your elite friends are you know on your way to heaven and they're being cast into torment i mean basically guys it's just it's whacked out man it's it's something that has come from the past it's been an abuse tool uh, throughout the ages and basically i'm just calling you to recognize that so let's
Can't get out. Well, you know, that's another one of the false considerations that we were putting forth. That somehow if you smoke cigarettes or if you're a glutton or whatever, that you can't stop these things. Whatever it is you're doing. And that's not true. You know, I used it to deceive myself for years. And when I became a Christian, I was smoking, and then I said, okay, I prayed, oh, God, you know, give me some power to stop, stop being, you know, smoking. And so I quit, and then I went around telling everybody, gee, God, look, God's real. He's real in my life. Look, I, I quit smoking. That ain't shit, man. I do that. I just did that uh, a few months ago just for some vocals, to get my vocals going. You can choose not to. People can choose not to do or to do anything that they want to. It's your choice. Not something that, oh, I can't, I can't stop doing this. That's bullshit. It, it's just total bullshit. You can be in the habit of something, but that doesn't mean you can't stop it. You weren't doing it at one time. It's that simple. So those types of teachings, this, this, I need God for something. First of all, there ain't no God, so nothing is going to happen. Now, positive affirmation psychology, I'm all for that, man. I'm all for, I'm all for meditation of the sort that, uh, inner contemplation, introspection. Sure. But when you just call out to some being that doesn't exist to affect something, and then have the social pattern play out as though that being answered your... That's like if you see wars, uh, Northern Ireland, Christians fighting against each other, each claiming that God has filled them with his spirit and that he's on their side, that he's confirmed that what they're doing is right. It's just complete absurdity. <laughs>
into the abyss. Well, I'll tell you what, vengeance is coming and it's going to get real good. Of course, I was speaking about the band coming on stage. But really, if you think about what the song speaks about, that's that the Jews and anyone else who's dared to reject conversion is going to be taken. And to the most violent deaths imaginable in the mind of man, and from there to torture. That is what the eschatological hermeneutics of Christianity concludes to. And if you can articulate that, causing converts, you'll have business persons who publish those documents which contain these matters, package your words, and actually place them around the globe to secure that as many new contributors financially to the religious machine get on board as possible. That's how you guys got my records. I began to articulate this. They saw the converts were happening. Blam! They funded that. That was going to make everybody some money. It was that simple. That simple done by individuals who went straight back to man with matters as simple as the healing fraud, tax evasion, simple things, completely shined it on because it's a scam. It is a scam. So in any case, what I'm suggesting to you all throughout this tape is a challenge to say, hey, life's a lot better than living based upon these forms of negative psychology. Live for today and enjoy today. And again, last point here is that what is a belief in heaven? It's a belief that something so much better than this that we're all going to. And you know what that does to the this, to our society now, to our world? It makes it look like shit. You go, oh, this is fucked and that's fucked and that's fucked because we're going to some place where it's not like this. No, no, this is what is. This is the best it's going to get. And the bottom line is, this is great. This is fucking cool. And yet, there are days when you'll say, no, this is fucked. Instead of saying, look, if there's something wrong, I need to change it. Instead of saying, oh, that's jacked up and I'm going to heaven, so I don't need to deal with that. No, if something's wrong, you deal with it socially. Because this is what we have. And it is good. And it is the best. And you're not going to get any better. Unless you're discussing the future event where you yourself help make the world better. And that's what I'm telling you right now. You want your children growing up, having other religions say that you guys are damned? What type of a social interplay is that going to be for your kids? Or, are you going to keep doing it and expecting everyone else just to respect your view? It doesn't work like that, man. Let's make the here and now what it needs to be and what it should be. Totally fucking cool. Next clip. Mr. Neptune! Very special to us. It invites Larry Farkas here to do a little bit of lead vocaling. Some people say it's one of our lengthy numbers. I question their reasoning on that, but this song is called Receive Him. Uh, this is dedicated to my good friend Dwayne. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Larry Farkas' house, and, uh... Man Caruso hanging out at the ocean. What beach are we at? We're at uh, this is Manhattan, 42nd Street, like I said before. This is cool. Check out the water. Check out, you can see for miles and miles and miles. You know? Down there, if you can see right over here, Rod. Traveling into Los Angeles, 
traveling all into where everyone breathes and there's a whole sky <laughs> Okay, now you were pulling out the pier? Yeah, there's a pier down there. See it? Can you see it? That's Manhattan Beach Pier. We got, there's three other piers, too. So, there's a Hermosa after this one, and then we're down the beach pier. Yeah. So you gotta have some of these here, too. You know what I mean? Mr. Rip Curl. That's his yeah. name, Rip Curl. No, oh, they mad dog. Anyway, you gotta have some of these eight gloves, too. They're great. I ain't gonna use them right now, because I don't need them. Pounding, sir. Where are those from? Uh, trusty bag I don't see them. This is usually uh, what I try to do after working on the weekend. doesn't know it, but this beach, there was 10,000 gallons of pollution dumped here this morning. <laughs> They'll come out quite violently ill, but... This is where we capture most of our great whites out here. Where Larry's at right now. Uh, they usually get about 500 feet long, and uh, could probably swallow, uh, oh, 10 or 20 men at the same time without chewing. But if the smaller ones, like 25 foot sharks, they could just take a bite and cut Larry right in half. But uh, we won't tell them about the one we just spotted out there. This is why Larry's in the water <laughs> alone. Larry's in the water alone, and no one else will go in with him. type of shit when they say and then then they say oh you're guilty before god now fucking this so-called god is guilty before mankind and, and it's and it's crap there is no god i mean i wish i was you know we could deal with it but the bottom line is you ain't guilty shit i ain't guilty shit 
And if, if some God has something to say to you, let him come down and tell him to your face, man. Let him fucking speak to you himself. Was he a fucking mute? Claiming to heal mutes? When that ain't happened, ain't no one fucking, not one fucking mute on this earth has been healed by Jesus. Not one deaf person, not one blind person, not one cripple. So when these people tell you, oh, healings are going on, that's bullshit. And I addressed it to those people, to the leadership, not a fucking thing. Because it's fraud. So you ain't guilty shit, and I ain't guilty shit. And if some guy has something to tell you about how you're guilty, he can come down. And people say, well, it's his word that they're selling to you. See what I'm saying? It's all about fucking sales. So let's move on to the next clip. We'll keep discussing these things.
Seat and we're on uh, PV Drive North. Here. Yeah, this is California. Okay. This, yeah, this is California. This is this is the ritzy part of California, you know. Yeah. So here we go. Right Bye. Right. Well, we're gonna go find a bike. Here they go. Now we're up here, going up on the hill here, and we're looking for these guys because they're riding up here. And like again, like I said, we're up in the ritzy area. Where uh, none of us live. Yeah. <laughs> where none of us live. Yeah, totally. So whoa, oh, man. See how you. Yo. Hunt? Oh, there they are. Hit him. Hit him. This is, who are you? Oh, heck, man, I don't know. Sugar Lord. Hey. Get a close up of them shoes. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. These are Roger Martin's shoes. What are those? Down, man. You're going to be looking for 
I can't help it. The window doesn't roll down. Actually, it's probably going to have to be filmed through this one right here. Yeah, why don't you hold your coffee and give me the camera. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. I just fall over. All right, we're putting you on. Hold on a second. Yeah, hey, Roger Martin. That's Roger Del Martin. That's a Mercedes. That's a Mercedes. And there's a Mercedes, something none of us will probably ever own. Rippy people. There, catch him. And that's us. That's you. That's everybody. That's you. What's up? Hey, Roger Martin, dude. Hello, friends. How you doing? You know, uh... <laughs> That's the right, Rod. Back, you know. That's hey, Rod. How many, many? how many miles do you ride, anyway? Oh, approximately 700 to 800 miles a day. All right. Oh, boy. Keep me in shape, you know, for those hard concert nights. Yeah, right. You do a turkey, <laughs> turkey stomp. Check out the ocean. Go, man. Keith just ate it. Do you hear that? Keith just ate it. <laughs> hey, shift it. Shift in the high, home. You know, we're going 1992, and you got to get in shape, so... The 90s. I have to come up here and jam out a little bit on the back. Check out those gloves. Hey, those are fancy. High tech. How fast That's are you going? That's people up here. He's a your front. 30 miles an hour. <laughs> Hey, get this jogger. Oh, Come on, Mr. Keith. Okay, we're gonna have to lift this car. We're gonna have to, to pull over. Push the stop button. Uh, maybe you gotta get in your lane. Are you filming? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, get some motion. Hey, hey. he just busted right past Woo! Keith. Oh, Whoa! Out. Yeah. Hey, where are you guys going anyway? They can't hear you. Hey, Roger Dale. He's checking his gear a little bit. Where are you going? Oh, that was gross. Hey, why don't you take a drink of your water? So how many times do you do this a week? Oh, 30, 40 times a week. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of bicycle is that? Vengeance Rising Special Bicycle. Specially what? made by Vengeance. What about them shoes? Ah, uh, Keith's getting a ride. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Here's <laughs> Mr. Keith Allison. Yeah. He's got the purple bike. Oh, yikes. Yeah. Hey, you guys, you know, the Bible says that physical training has some value, but righteousness has training for this age and the age to come. So, you know, just to get in shape for some of that little value, not to go back riding, but main thing, you got to stay in the Word, stay in prayer, keep that relationship going. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> Excuse me, you guys. Oh, he's got a whale on Keith. Oh, wait. Still hard again. Here, my buddy, Keith Allison. Come here, Keith. Yo, Keith! Gig, so I guess good, bro. Oh, yikes. Job sign. <laughs> when you're playing bass guitar, you know, playing in a speed metal band, you got to develop some speed and keep it. Same with getting in shape for the road, for stage. You got to get in shape, you got to keep it in shape. So that's what I like to do, you know, ride the bike a little bit. Stop the car so we can watch the bicycle race. Oh, oh, this is a good spot, Harry. Stop here.
you to become one of us stuff. Again, that's inviting people to renounce their worldview, whether it be humanity or whatever. Human, for instance, my, in my situation, I'm an atheist, and satanic at that in the sense that if you've ever read Dr. LeBay's teachings, and that's what this polemic is, it's an expression of the teachings of Dr. Anton LeBay, it's a mirror being held up as a polemic to show you guys precisely what you're doing. People are saying, oh, the lyrics are, you know, they're evil, they're satanic. Well, they're just showing you what you really are. And like Nathan to David, you are that man. You may not like it, but surprise. Every one of these correlates to what I was taught in the Bible. Every one of these has a correlation. My Deadpool on the website. It was, oh, that's fucking cruel, Rich Mullins, motherfucking Teresa. You're fucking with Mother Teresa. Well, shit, man, it was that religious system that caused so many of those babies to be born by denying contraception, saying that that was something that wasn't of God. And it was Dr. Heimers who told me to begin saying prayers for death, that we were supposed to pray for people's deaths and shit. This is teaching from Christianity. And I'm saying, that's bullshit, man. So you guys see it and you say, oh, that's, that's some fucked up shit. Well, you are that man. So now, it's like, what the fuck are you going to do about it? My suggestion is that you begin cataloging this literature in databases, in libraries, for what it is. It's a fabrication which brings about bigotry. It inflicts upon people who don't deserve it stress, anxiety, unnecessary pain, all based upon a fabrication from a God nobody has seen and nobody has heard. But they're being sold the documents. Sold the documents. I mean, if that doesn't fucking make it clear for some people, I don't know what the fuck to tell them. But the bottom line is, that's the simplicity of it. So let's get on to the next clip, and we'll talk more about this later. For many shall come. that their sons were brainwashed and abused by members of a Saugus religious cult took their case to Santa Ana court today. 
As Barney Morris reports, they won their custody battle, but the brothers are still pursuing criminal charges against the cult. Two brothers, Robert and Kerry Miller, joined a religious cult as teenagers 17 years ago. They met and married their wives, also members of the Tony and Susan Alamo Foundation. But today, they were in court finalizing divorces from those wives and asking sole custody of their three sons. The Millers say their wives were brainwashed and that the boys were being mentally and physically abused on orders of cult leader Tony Alamo. Judge Richard Frazee did grant them sole custody and ordered that the wives and other cult members remain at least 200 yards away from the Millers and their sons. Attorney Sidney Raddus told reporters that 11-year-old Justin Miller was beaten so badly he was bleeding for a week. The abuse consisted of Justin being held down by four adults while a fifth adult using a two-handed paddle three feet long beat him 140 times. Rada says he wants the California Attorney General to consider criminal charges against Tony Alamo and members of his religious cult which operates several communes, including one in Saugus. The boys and the fathers both told stories of physical and psychological abuse while they were members of the cult. We are living our lives to the best of our ability. We do try to live as normal as a life as we can, and the boys have adjusted really great. You know, they've got Little League trophies now from this year, and they got awards in school. Justin was the top student in his class, and, uh, you know, they're getting along. He came to power in post-World War I Germany, a nation plagued by chaos and despair. Adolf Hitler offered a vision of a German master race, a thousand-year empire to rule the world. He left behind a legacy of death. to pay for this again and again and again I've got to pay for your sins how many times have I got to pay for your sins I'm getting tired I'm getting tired for a minute. We're going to get upstairs with Spoolio, sir. Oh, that's okay, Joe. I don't think we'll be seeing each other again. I don't have no hard feelings. Thank you, Charlie. You've done a remarkable job. You gave me a fair trial, just like you promised. And I ain't bitter about having to go back in. It's always been my home anyhow. What about death, Charlie? What about it? I told you I'm already dead. And while I'm waiting around to take the other form, I got steady chow. It ain't great, but it's better than garbage. And I don't think the black man's gonna take over. I'll make you put a clog in that one. In other words, the trial alerted Whitey. Yeah. But I almost did it, didn't I? I almost pulled it off, I almost made it, huh? No, Charlie, you weren't even close. You killed some people, that's what you did. You accomplished murder. You took a bunch of sad kids, human fluff, and you played jailhouse games on them. That's it, Charlie. You're not even important anymore. Okay, now this issue of uh, 
many will come and, and his name and say that they are the Christ. Well, let me take that one step further. People came in the first place and said that there was a Christ. And that's bullshit. It's fabricated man-made documents and invention that men put together for social control and for cash. And the bottom line is, those you got, the, whether it's Baha U Allah, Jesus Christ, the Mahdi, the Twelfth Amman, I mean, every fucking, you got all these people, you know, oh, the, the fucking cult in Japan that was fucking gas in the goddamn fucking subway and shit. Oh, everybody's in touch with some fucking God, aren't they? You see? And you say, oh, well, that proves the text. No, 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 no. That proved my point. And they're coming and saying that there's one in the first fucking place, all claiming to have some revelation, but not one of them being able to have a shred of evidence of that. Because it's not so. There is no Christ. There's damn good government, and that's precisely, you guys can be senators, you can be governors, you can be involved in the political process. Shit. And now we can institute and make sure that when, in the separation of church and state that there's peace. And motherfuckers try and come up with that religious shit on you, just like we did the fucking the Anglicans in England. We said, fuck you. And, you know, and bottom line, don't jack with us. If any religion comes at you from any other fucking way, we, as a government, can thwart that. We can stop that. Because it's fucking, that's something that's irrational. And what I'm saying to you now is there are things that do need to be addressed right now. The anti-Semitism. The past history to blacks. All types of shit. Jimi Hendrix was turned away from fucking eating lunch at a cafe because he was black. Because he was a cursed descendant of the tribe of Ham. It's that simple. That's what that shit breeds. And the only way that we're now being able to finally address that is to come to a better understanding of humanity. And so if people say, you know, about the news, the new lyrics and everything, it's a polemic. It's just showing what is actually already going on. On to the next clip. Hey, this is Larry. Yeah, hi. And Glenn, look at he's playing. Hey, there's this. Roger. Hey, Roger, you own this Chevelle? Is it? I didn't know you were working on this killer engine. Oh, come on, Glenn. You can't work on a car. California streets. Are you serious, Glenn? Uh, this is your car? No, this is not my car. Oh, you're I, just I, looking I, like you're working I on it. I enjoy doing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is a bad motor, though, man. This, is, this right here is a 1970 350LT1 Corvette motor. But it can't okay. it beat my... Uh, yeah, I'm holding up the card so Glenn knows what to it say, everybody, because he doesn't really know dust. what this is. I, I really... I got a super sport. I don't care what you have. Hey, this has got a new battery in it, yeah, Doug. Yeah, that's right. I got more air in my car. <laughs> oh, no. There's more air in the tires. There's more chrome, okay? Oh, there is. A, the chrome makes it go a lot it'll, faster. It'll, yeah, Too bad right. it doesn't have an air cleaner. It doesn't need one. Oh, you just like sucking down them bugs, huh? Right. Yeah. All right, good. Yeah. Too bad Actually, it looks like garbage, though, huh? This has got 300. It's pushing stock 375 horse. That's yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, we hooked the horses on the back. But I enjoy, I, I enjoy helping my friends, like, what do you, what do you think about Allison this? over here. This now, is Keith, Keith again, I bet you own this thing, huh? Right. He was it's already on this video lab. once before, it's wasn't he? Keith, are you happy with his motor? His Tell us. We helped him put this His tool. Me and Keith his ramp. His band. His music. His instrument. Actually, Keith, you know what? You don't have a, um, a point. Uh, Who is Keith? That's what I want to know. His clothes. These are Keith's clothes. Glenn, can I ask you a personal question? We use Keith's toothbrush. Did you adjust Keith's valve? <laughs> there are nothing wrong with Keith Bell. Why doesn't it run? Because he's... Come on, Keith, can he's you fire this up for us? I can fire it up. Fire it up. Let's see if it sounds better than my Camino. I got the distributor cap on. Put the distributor cap on. Okay. See, look, that's all he's done. He knows how to take it on and off. That's anyway, it. hold on a second, Keith. I'm going to fire this baby up here. Uh-oh, i, I got to get a view of the exhaust. Yet, I'll tell you when you're ready to go. I'm not even in the car yet. Oh. This is an incredible day. It is. Hey, Roger. What do you think, Maya? Oh, I really like it out here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I found it. <laughs> Maya, how are your legs, man? They like rubber by now. Oh, yeah. I enjoy doing this. This is, this is, uh, this is what he enjoys doing, but he never does it. He doesn't do it, does he? Glenn. You know, Glenn. You know he never does nothing. Isn't he so tell us about, about Glenn, man. That's why, I'm going to tell you about Glenn. See that car right there? That's actually that. Glenn's truck. And the reason why he has that is because it's import, because imports don't break down. Glenn, is this true? You own an import, Glenn? I own an import. Oh, my gosh. Earlier in the video, oh, he was talking about... But I own an American car, too. Yeah. A VW? So we, are, we are... Vengeance Rising is pro-America, okay? Is that why you 
own a Japanese what? car, Glenn? So do I. I own a Japanese yeah, car. Yeah, but we're still pro. Let's see if this thing even gets started here. Oh, I'm getting back. <laughs> well, let's look at the oh, exhaust here. Right. Okay, watch the plane. It's like a fine precision tool. Glenn, you know, can you answer a question? To a mechanic? Yes. I that, can. What is that in your hand? This is a ratchet, a Craftsman ratchet. It's actually a copy of a Snap-on, okay? If you'll notice... Okay, thank you, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll notice, the, the ratchet... You know how to work right. it. See how smooth it is? See, this tool right here to a mechanic... People don't care no about Now, warfare. Where people have told you that they're demons and angels and fucking devils and gods and shit. And then, and then they fucking wonder why people trip out on occasion. That's because they told them to fucking believe in that bullshit in the first place. Nah, that shit shouldn't be preached as any sort of a, a social, social pattern, as a, as a social strengthening tool. There are no gods, there are no, it's a form of delusionary psychosis that has been imposed upon people. And again, just for social control. There are no prayers that you're doing that are taking any devils or angels or anybody and putting them anywhere. Although people will do it, and then what do they get to? And now we're passing around a fucking bucket. It's a financing situation. If they can get people to believe these fantasies, these fabrications, and then to articulate that these things are part of their life. They've experienced devils or angels and shit. <laughs> How much did they, then they've got a pawn out there just generating more income. And people do it every fucking day. Every fucking day. But the bottom line is, guys, admit it, man. You've never seen, heard, any angels, gods, devils, or shit. You may have had your imagination. Maybe somebody fucked with you. Now, that's an easy thing to do. And are you aware of any instances where that's happened? It's very simple. Very simple. Remember that fucking, uh, that group down in, uh, Texas? Said that the god was gonna show up on channel fucking 38, man. Channel fucking 38. Because they tapped into a frequency, fucked with the dude's head, and then... Had him telling his whole church, oh, yeah, God's coming on channel fucking 30. That's bullshit, man. That's religion, man. That's what it does to people. It fucks with their heads to the degree where they trip out like that. And so we're just saying, hey, let's move on from that. Let's transcend people's tools that can fuck you over. Because bottom line is, our whole history, as you're seeing, is a separation from that. Is a... The farther we get away from that bullshit teaching from slave love to your masters and all that type of shit, the closer we are to a reasonable and rational humanity. So warfare really deals with, hey, first of all, again, get your finances in line. Run for government if you want to affect things, if you want to be able to put tax dollars in certain means, because we do have plenty of resources. Now, it's just a matter of who's allocating them, who's representing the allocations of those. How does that get distributed amongst the states? That's the way to do it. Not praying about something. Fuck, become a congressman, become a senator, get involved in the political process. That's really the option that you have available to you. And there's nothing wrong with that. We are the government, we are the people. To whatever degree we involve ourselves. And granted, I've heard the, the, the multitudes of thoughts about the past, but that was precisely that, the past. So we're moving on to a, a day where you can recognize this, that uh, the farther that you separate, from those whacked out teachings, the better in humanity will be served. And really, I've had the experience, dude, I feel so much fucking better about myself today than I ever fucking have. I mean, I'm telling you, the fucking, the idea of what I was doing haunted me for so fucking long. But I feel a hell of a lot better today. A lot more fucking freedom just to, just to be, knowing that those things that I've addressed to you today are no longer a part of my life. Tell you what, man, it's the way to go. And I just want you guys to have that same freedom, to be at peace with the world, not to be fucking at that constant argument again. Hey, shit, if some religion comes and says, like, again, Islam was threatening France, that the president of France has to convert, well, fuck, that they haven't fucking, you know, turned Algeria into a sea of glass or something is fucking beyond me. But the bottom line is, and then again, there's a military forces that are going to address that shit when it does that. So the bottom line is, man, your thing is why cause friction and tell them the damned. At least we, as atheists, will say, look, 
we're not going to threaten you, and you're not going to threaten us. If you threaten us, well, fuck. You know what the fuck do you expect? What in the fuck do you expect as a response? We're here trying to fucking, we're, we're each given four months of our fucking tax dollars to help people out on our streets. So people have fucking food and clothes and fucking streets and shit and, 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 and peace and law and order. And then you want to threaten what the fuck we're doing because some god that you never seen or heard from instructed you to do so. Well, fucking bring him down. Show him. Where the fuck is he at? Let him tell us. And then, oh, well, uh, you know, fuck that, man. But you see, you're doing the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. And I'm just saying, hey, come on to the fucking, come on and get along with what's going on, man. With fucking moving forward and ahead with your life and with the fucking good things. Versus staying within that fucking, dude, bullshit is what it is. And I know. Because that's why you're watching this video. Because I was teaching it. I was teaching awaiting the hour, preparing for war, to slay the deniers of Christ. Precisely what the lyrics are. You, just, you don't know how fucking whack that is, dude. You know how fucking jacked up and whacked out that is? But yet businessmen would pump that all over New York, London, Miami, Chicago, Detroit, Houston, France, South Africa. Fucking my albums went everywhere preaching that shit. And I'm coming to you now. After I found out that it was fraud through the healing thing, and saying that shit needs to stop, man. You need to fucking come to the realization, be able to admit, say, he's fucking right. Bottom line is, why? Because it is fucking right. Show me one member on the Supreme Court who's going to tell you that the New Testament text it says that Jews are blinded by Jesus is fucking a document that should be used for a moral and social foundation who believes that that New Testament document is accurate in what it says. Not a fucking one. Not a fucking one. You know why? You know why that's the Supreme Court? Because people fucking, they get there, and granted, people used to do that, but things are changing. Not a fucking one. So look at least at the leaders of the fucking land and learn something. You know? And if there's anything wrong, that's what the whole political process is about, so that you then can get in there and be a leader. Because they, we've had people doing wrong things in the past. Like people will do the wrong, wrong things in the future. But at least if all of us can, as a contingent, be seeking for a difference, a change, and going in the right direction, fuck, man. That's totally cool. So let's get on with that. Here's the next clip. I think many of you are familiar with the two called Mulligan Two.
1972 SS music. El Camino. I love music. <laughs> yeah, I love music. it's uh, a beautiful uh, electric blue with his uh, inky rims and uh, TA radials, if you notice. If we look in the inside here, go we'll check it out. He's got a nice uh, B&M quick shift. Uh, and underneath that, he's got, I think, I believe it's a Turbo 400 tranny. And uh, he is sporting. Hey, Doug. What kind of engine are you sporting in this thing? A 350? Uh, it's an extra heavy duty rubber band. Oh. Well, let's, let's look at the engine in this thing. So much. Okay. Doug says I can pull the engine open. We look in the car here, and we'll see that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a brake release. Hey. This is not one of those cheap Japanese cars. I guess he does have an actual hood release down here. If we look. That's my hand. Excuse me. And uh, Mr. Doug Team is going to open his hood and... That's it. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, not much to look at, is it? Oh, well. Hey, Doug, where'd you go? Doug. Oh, there he is. That's uh, Doug Team and his uh, fiance, Gina. And Larry. Say hi, Gina. Hi. And Larry. Oh. And uh, yes. Oh, by the way, when are you getting married? What is the date now? July 6th. July 6th, and uh, you know, you guys uh, will miss it. So uh, we'll see you later now. We're going to fade out now. Fade out. Bye. The Metal Maniacs of Thrash, Vengeance Rising, coming to Thrash Bash 90 at Janice Landing, October 30th at 7.30 p.m. A metal mania so intense, so fast, so outrageous. Vengeance Rising at Janice Landing, October 30th. Tickets are $5 with special appearance of Sonic Angel. Thrash Bash 90, listen to the steel scream. <laughs>
1953, when the war ended, the U.S. nuclear stockpile had tripled thanks to massive spending under NSC-68. The U.S. now had about 1,350 atomic bombs, at least 10 times more than the Soviet Union. And U.S. scientists were pressing ahead with the hydrogen bomb, a weapon that would add a totally new dimension to the nuclear age. In November 1952, on Anahuitac Atoll, the U.S. tested the world's first thermonuclear device. Four, three, two... The explosion was 600 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The atoll disappeared completely. For the moment, at least, the nuclear balance had shifted in America's favor. It would take only 40 or 50 such bombs to destroy the Soviet Union. In 1953, within a year of the American explosion, the Soviets were ready to test. decisions had brought us to a chilling paradox. From this time forward, to protect ourselves, we would risk annihilation. There were people who just sort of wrung their hands at this uh, man's stupidity or you've managed a man or whatever it was. Uh, won't these people ever stop? And the answer, well, not now. <laughs> there is violent death. Again goes back to that whole issue. If people are saying that the new album and the new lyrics on the website are fucking crazy, man, they're just, you know, the violence of killing babies and shit when the song Baby Jesus or, or Die, it's because that's exactly what is coming out from you guys. That's exactly what Christianity teaches. That everyone's gonna get fucking slaughtered a very violent death. And it's just a mirror. I want you to keep that in mind. It's a polemic. Shit. You have an open door with me. If you have any questions about any of these matters, feel free to drop me a line or email or call. You can call the 213-860-9968 number and keep in touch. And I just ask you to really, man. I mean, it took me years, granted, before I was finally able to break free from the whole plethora of Christianity that, that I was involved in. And I remember the fucking moment, like it was yesterday. I remember the fucking moment when I just walked through the realization that, bam, this is all there fucking is. There is no God affecting this shit. It's just human beings making decisions and doing things based on cash. And that was it. That is it. Bottom fucking line. And the reality is that teaching about heaven, that you're going to someplace better, that taints your fucking view of now. That makes it seem like now is somehow not as good as what it's going to be when now is what is. That is to say, this is fucking great. Right now and today is good. It's fucking great. There's no some place that makes this seem like shit because it's so much better. Whatever fucking peace we're gonna have, it's peace we have to create. You're not gonna die and go to something so much better. This is what's good. And when you can see that, when you can acknowledge the fact that what we have here is the very best and make it as best as it can be, Instead of saying, oh, well, you know, this and that's fucked up, and, and, and at least I'm going someplace better. I'm going someplace where, where it's, it's all good and, and this place sucks. That's, that's fucking with people's heads, man. And it's bullshit. Nobody's going nowhere. When you die, your brain cell fucking dies, and it's over. So while you are here, live and enjoy today. Just fucking have that peace and the freedom to be yourself without having to utilize slandering other nations or ethnicities. And I'll tell you what, man, it's a freedom and a peace that fucking Christianity just doesn't have. And I know the elitism, the proudness, the pride that comes from Christianity, that teach you where you're like, wait a minute, this is fucking cool, because you're in a state of bigotry. And that state tells you that you're elite, when actually what's happening is you're just a, a social bigot, which is what I was. 
awaiting the hour, preparing for war to slay the deniers of Christ. We were going to come in a massive fucking war and make sure everybody died who didn't fucking succumb to the indoctrination procedures. Damn, and that quote-unquote good feeling is no good feeling at all. That's psycho-fucking-cotic. That's psychotic fucking thinking. Which is exactly what Pat Robertson teaches, Benny Hinn, TBN, the fucking... You look anywhere around the globe where you see uh, fucking churches and these teachings, this elitism, is what's being propagated on humanity. Hitler, ensuring in the thousand year reign, was fulfilling the damnation of the predestined band. And the bottom line is, what I'm calling you guys to is to a recognition. If you thought I had something to say, Oh, Roger has, you know, he writes the words of God and shit. I'm telling you right now, it was bullshit. I never heard or seen from no fucking God. I had to buy that book before I could fucking articulate it to you. It's bullshit. There is no God. What there is, though, is our humanity. And that can create a better world. But right now, you guys are fucking harboring all that old shit. And you listen to me then, listen to me now. I'm telling you. That is wrong, and by coming away from it, however long it takes, I challenge you with the James Randi Foundation with the money, million dollars, to investigate the claims of Healy. There's not one then. And then investigate the claims of tongues. This babbling, this fucking babbling that's happening all over the fucking country. People are coerced into fucking just speaking irrationalities and just fucking going off like imbeciles. And yet it's sanctioned as somehow a socially valuable tool when all it is is complete irrationality. It's, it's taking leave of the fucking senses of, of reason. And another motherfucker is claiming that they're getting interpretations of those tongues. And they're lying through their fucking teeth. But yet it keeps the money fucking going. It keeps the little units and groups going. So... I just want you guys to know that before I came to my point, hey man, I went to your guys' leaders. I went to fucking, oh, I could, everybody from Carol, who you know is John Paul, down to fucking whoever, Chuck Colson, you want to fucking name it, Chuck Smith, fucking, you, you fucking name it, man. I mean, damn, I can't tell you the tons of leaders that I went to with these issues. And I'm telling you what, bro, you've been caught up, you've been taken a pawn, duped a fool. And what I'm saying now is to truly help your future. I mean, granted, I thought I was doing you a favor back then. And I'm doing this video today because I don't want you to have to fucking have the future. That is the end result of that. As you've seen all down through fucking history, it just led to fucking disaster, disaster, disaster. But rather, we can work towards something a hell of a lot fucking better. Work together. And it's totally fucking cool video I turned you guys on to my library with the books I read and, and things like that that I enjoyed back when I was drinking eight pots of coffee a day well uh, I've got the coffee out but in any case I'm still reading as much as I possibly can and I'm reading a book uh, by Congressman John Lewis who was you know he walked side by side with Dr. Mark Dr. Martin Luther King and also um, you know through the whole civil rights thing had a profound um, role within the features that brought the blacks for instance the right to vote because back in the 60s, they couldn't even vote. Because, of course, they were the cursed descendants of the tribe of Ham to serve the brothers, which was implemented in the social pattern, which is, of course, denied. Uh, but, well, <laughs> it will be addressed. In any case, the reality is that he was up at the election debate with a friend of his who was running against him, who was shocked that after all those years, it was only now that they'd come to the stage where they were actually seeking election votes because they both had ideas that they wanted to do that they differed on. And in any case, what he asked Congressman Lewis, he said, look, you've known me all these years, and now you're saying all these things about my character. How come you never brought it up all those years when, when we were working together? What type of character is that on your behalf? And what Congressman Lewis said in return is he said, Julian, my friend, this campaign is not about the past, and it's not about our friendship. This is a referendum of our future, of our city and on the future of our country and really that's what this boils down to it's not all the things that happened in the past as you'll hear so many people say oh yeah Raj got robbed fifty thousand dollars well yeah I fucking did 
and I don't know how much you make a year, but let's just say it fucked things up for me. I made royally. But that's not what this is about. Although I would like that fucking address still, no doubt. <laughs> no fucking shit. But the reality is, this is about the future. This is about where we're going versus where we've been. Where have we been? Awaiting the hour. Preparing for war to slay the deniers of Christ. And that's where we've been. We need to transcend that and fucking be able to go out and have a good time and just fucking live as normal human beings in a world that, that fucking needs that. That fucking needs that. So I just encourage you guys to keep in touch with me, to discuss any issues you want. Drop me a line, email me, and, uh, you know, we'll keep in touch. We'll keep talking about these things. And again, there's a million dollars for any one of you who can prove the relationship with Jesus that they've told you you have. You've never seen or heard Jesus. But yet, you're being a pawn telling other people that you have. I know it's the hardest fucking thing you'll ever do to finally admit he's fucking right. I never seen God, I never heard no God, and I'm telling people I've got a relationship with the fucking God. It'll be one of the fucking hardest things you'll ever do. But once you transcend that, I'll tell you what, man, the whole perspective of the world is so much different. It's weird how much better it is, how significantly more uh, positive it is, and how it can help you get through, I mean, times of fucking depression and shit. Shit, I'll tell you what, that robbery that happened to me of over 50 G's, there are times when I was fucking down, Jack. But because I could see a future of humanity, I could see a future of myself in that state versus the state from which I'd come. I'll tell you what, man, it works in a very profound way that's useful for you. So we do invite you to come on to our side, that is to say, to transcend the bigotry and to be involved with the new record Vengeance is doing, and to use it to help others understand that too. So thanks a lot for checking out this video. I know it's been a bit solemn on these moments, but the bottom line is, it's because it's an, inter it's an important thing to know. And I guess as I begin to speak with you guys more and more down the road, you know, they'll become more concise, you know, but uh, for right now I'm just kind of ad living because there's so much I want to say to you that I'm not saying. That's, um, I'm glad you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll just keep in touch. Peace.
the website home dot earthing dot net slash tilda be rising slash and of course those of you who are familiar with the site already seen it with this you can keep in touch with the band by clicking the link right at the bottom the daily page which lets you know what's happening every day so I'll let you know. Keep in touch. Yeah. 